that's <laughs> that's awkward. Um, wow, you kind of caught me off guard here. Well, welcome all yeehaws. Welcome back to the channel. I'm glad you can make it back today. And of course, clinks to coffee. So today we're going to be talking about what everyone voted for on Instagram. So we're going to be talking about how you can build your wardrobe and build a foundation in your wardrobe. How do I, you know, start a wardrobe? How do I get into it? And of course, the main thing would be to stay away from fast fashion. The other thing that we want to we want to talk about, what kind of brands? What brands, JQ? What brands do you recommend? Carhartt right. double knees. Levi right. 501s. That's it. The video's done. Bad joke. <laughs> so what is a timeless wardrobe <clears throat> and or timeless pieces? <clears throat> Jeez. The question we need to ask the fashion government is, what are timeless pieces and what is a timeless wardrobe? Now I got the answers for you because I defined it. Me. Alone. Without the government's help. Now, what is a timeless wardrobe? A timeless wardrobe is filled with timeless pieces. Haha, <laughs> funny, funny. Now, timeless pieces are pieces that are going to last long term and stay in your wardrobe for a long time. I believe I wrote down, um, I commented something somewhere about what a timeless piece is. I don't remember when. Hopefully I could find that, but I doubt I will. Basically, it's pieces that you buy when you start building a wardrobe and building that foundation that we're all looking for. And these pieces are going to be one good quality, two, hopefully sustainable, three, very versatile with your wardrobe. Now with versatility comes, you know, practicality. So they're going to be very much on the minimalistic side, nothing, you know, statement -y, no drip, sauce, none of that, no swag. So the main thing is these pieces are going to be very, very minimalistic, something that's going to be very interchangeable. What we will be is minimalistic goblins. Now, we're looking for pieces that are going to stay with us for a long time and that we hopefully won't need to throw away or, you know, get rid of. Now, I, I have these pair of pants that I wear all the time. I've had them for about a year. I'll show some pictures right here. Insert sound effect. I wear these pants all the time. They are very interchangeable. And when I say interchangeable, I mean they can very much be versatile with grunge outfits, with my dark wave outfits, with my dark wear outfits, with my depression and sadness that I constantly feed into. <clears throat> I don't know where that came from, but the main thing that we need to figure out and talk about is why do we need a foundation? Where to start for this foundation? And the reasons are is why we do why we need a foundation in building a, a wardrobe without a good foundation your style is going to plummet and you're going to waste a lot of money you me everyone i don't need to talk about fast fashion maybe i will in another video but you know bad quality trendy um it very much boxes you into a specific style did i mention bad quality but the main thing though is we want to stay away from fast fashion only if you can afford it. I am going to try and give as many brands that I know that have sales and can help everyone out because I'm just that guy. No round of applause, please. Anyway, the main thing is finding these minimalistic pieces for a good price for something decent. Now price ranges are going to range from different, different, whatever I recommend anyone that's watching this, I recommend saving about a $1,000. Um, put it in like a savings account just for fashion alone, because you do want to save your money. Work with what you have currently, um, your wardrobe, whatever it is, um, streetwear, clothes, whatever you have, sheen, sheen halls, maybe, I don't know what you have. 
just work with what you currently have um save that money do not spend it i i know you want to fill that chasm that that void that you have i i know we i i know i do you know i i just bought a bunch of stuff from japan it's coming in it's coming in but just hold out for a bit you know just do it for the country do it for the fashion community hold out for a while save your money and trust me, it's gonna feel so great buying all these clothes that you're you're gonna need in the meantime. Also, um, can we get a uh, hair check? I just woke up today. Hair check. Uh, my hair is kind of looking nice, kind of looking good. Zoom in. Can we get a zoom in? It's looking kind of good right now, you know? Don't mind me. We want essential pieces. Essential pieces are going to be something that are, is going to form with you and that's going to stay with you for a long time. So these essential pieces, you know, they're not going to be no Dickies, no Carhartt pants. Those are going to, you know, those tr are trendy. Those are going to die. And I don't know if that will fulfill your validation that you're getting from them. My validation? Are you filling my void with validation? You're not. Only I can do that. Now, what are these essential pieces? I recommend everyone getting a pair of trousers, some denim pants, a black and white shirt, and jackets and overcoats are like a last thing, but it's only because I live in LA and it doesn't get that cold out here. Now, if you do live in like Russia or Moscow or I don't know, New York, when it's not humid and disgusting, get yourself some, you know, get what you need, right? When you're building that foundation, you're, you're gonna want to just get what you need. You don't need to make, you don't need to buy statement pants. You don't need to buy funky denim pants. You don't need to buy crazy cargo pants. Those are just, I would say, statement pieces, and or just those pieces that are just gonna be outstanding. Something that's gonna, you know, be like, oh, I remember him wearing that. These essential pieces are gonna be pieces people don't remember. Um. The thing is, we want to buy clothing pieces that people don't really remember. Um, ew, did you wear that last week? You're disgusting. No, I actually washed it. Or, no, I'm not stinky, so it, it, I didn't need to wash it. The thing is, when you get these pieces, people won't really remember them. They become intermix, intermixable, interchangeable. Um, they help bring outfits together. Some minimalistic pieces stay with you um my style's ever evolving your style's ever evolving we change as people we become more healthy or we become more toxic kind of like me i'm a toxic human being i'm the most toxic person in the fashion community oh wait alpha m teaching men's fashion my bad i'm i i, I retract that statement i'm actually probably third down the list if there's any more people you know that are more toxic than me, um, comment down below. We want these pieces to be, you know, not like, not really something you'll remember. Intermixable, interchangeable. I wear a lot of my, the same clothes of these essential pieces that I buy and I change them out. And, you know, they help me very much because I can wear the same pair of pants twice within a week. People don't really remember, but what they do remember is the outfit as a whole. Now, it's what those pair of pants can bring to the table what that shirt can bring to the table. Now, when you're building an outfit, a lot of the times we're just like putting on an outfit and we're like, oh man, you know, this is kind of, this looks too crazy. It's like too much color or it's, it doesn't feel right. I feel like I need more of this color, insert black, white, gray, red, whatever. Now we have this essential piece that you could just bring in and it doesn't scream, I'm loud. It doesn't scream statement. It just helps. It helps the flow of the outfit. It brings it together. And that's what we want. If you have too many statement pieces, we're going to look like SpongeBob outfit, Squidward drip outfit. No, 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 no. When you're dealing with minimalism, it allows you to be versatile. Now, with the essentials that I'm talking about on a day to day, it's so nice because let's say you, this is another video I have to make. It all depends on where you live and how much self-expression um, and who allows you and what allows you, what the government, what the governor, 
what people around allow you to express yourself, how much they allow you to, I should say. Um, I live in LA, I'm lucky enough to be able to kind of dress as crazy as possible. I don't really dress that crazy. Um, but if I did dress like this in, I don't know, let's say Alabama, you know, I for sure would get hate crimed or someone would say something mean to me. People kind of leave people alone in LA, you know, we'd be doing our own things. New York, the same thing. New York's another great place to allow like, you know, self-expression. Now, if you live in a place um, that doesn't really allow that much self-expression, I think minimalism is going to help you out. Minimalism will help you um, form a whole outfit that is acceptable socially. But what you can do is ease your way into maybe using some pieces that are kind of like your forte. Um, what you can do is, you know, with your minimalistic outfit, no one's going to really pay attention to your hands. I mean, you could throw on a ring or even a bangle. I wear these leather bangles a lot. I'll, I'll post some pictures. You can wear maybe like small accessories and just do as much as possible as the area allows you to. I don't want you getting hate crimed. I, I don't want you to get hurt because of the stupid rules of kind of like what the society is out there. I don't want you getting ostracized. It's not worth it. Um, just wait. I, I would rather you be safe than, um, as cliche as it sounds, sorry, or in a ditch, or beat up, or robbed. Um, I want you to be safe when you're, you know, getting into fashion. I sound like a dad. Um, I kind of am, but... You know, for all y'all that live like in different areas that don't allow self-expression, be careful. Be very careful. I think it's worth doing that and waiting till, you know, you can hit your pinnacle once you leave that sorry ass state that's not allowing you to, you know, express who you are and, you know, who you are as a person. Just be cautious and be wary. The main thing is when you're dressing with these essential pieces, it is so easy and to build a an outfit that won't be too um, eye gawking. I don't know if that's a word it, that came to my brain. Too like eye grabbing to people to to want to like you know bother you or attack you for what you're wearing. It, minimalism is very versatile in different places. Um, no one will bat an eye, but they may look at you because you look stylish and you look you know more interesting but you're not pushing the boundaries to the point where you will get attacked or you will get hate crimed or you will get hurt also i i should have uh, explained this i recommend um waiting for sales the end of season sales are so beautiful olive clothing does great sales ad soul does great sales too as well quite affordable between the um 50 to a hundred dollar mark usually their stuff's a bit more expensive but on sales it's between that and i'm telling you like th this is all you need like this is what i mean you save a thousand dollars and let's just just for some dumb reason everything you bought was a hundred bucks let's just say that's 10 pieces that is already a lot of clothes um if you're buying just essential pieces those 10 pieces will take you a long way down your journey of going into fashion and becoming that sophisticated sexy monster that you are that is what we want and these brands will very much help you out i already i probably already rolled as many as i can um there are other brands that i will talk about that might be more statement pc or more interesting um to wear but the brands that i just gave out right now currently is brands i've personally owned and i personally vouch for and i give to others when people ask I don't gatekeep, um, again, as funny as it is, as being a fashion elitist, I should probably be gatekeeping stuff, but I won't gatekeep these these pieces because I don't want you buying from fast fashion. I don't want you buying Sheen. Who buys from Sheen, men? This guy? Who buys from Fashion Nova, men? This guy? So I already talked about why you should stay away from fast fashion, you know, quality, quality, quality. Really bad quality. Bad for the environment, bad for textile waste, bad for the constant abuse in their factories from their workers. Uh, did I mention they rip off designers a lot of the time, even small businesses? They're no better than some rep companies and manufacturers that rep 
small businesses. That's a whole nother video. I don't want to get into that and I don't want to start another rep war. The reason you want to build a foundation is because you want to save the most amount of money. You want to save as much as possible in terms of your spending because I've gone down the road where I bought a lot of clothes that ended up getting trashed and I don't wear no more. And a lot of what fast fashion and overconsumption provides is the instant gratification that we're getting a lot of clothes for a nice discounted price. And it feels like, wow, more clothes equates to better fashion. And I will argue that it does not. Having more clothes actually makes it very hard to style. You have so much um, versatility that it becomes almost overwhelming and even to a point where you end up forgetting what you have in your wardrobe. If you look in your wardrobe currently, if you get if you go to your wardrobe right now and you look at your wardrobe as I'm looking at mine and you look through and you forget about certain pieces in there and I'm not talking about like one or two that's okay. I'm talking about like five or like six pieces. You have too many clothes. At that point, sell them off, sell them to friends, like friends are always looking for clothes. Try and do your best to sell them, become a reseller. Start scamming kids. Do your best to sell the clothing as much as possible. Or, you know, if you really need to, donate to friends, you know, give to friends. Um, you can even give to the homies. You can give to your GF or BF. If you have a boyfriend or girlfriend, or if you're dating somebody currently, you're no longer into fashion. Hot take. It clouds the brain with happiness. And with happiness comes no more creative thinking. If they're making you happy, don't stay. It's not worth it. You're losing out. The sadder the person, the better the fashion. JQ quote. That was toxic. Don't don't listen to what I was saying. Now, I've been talking about foundations. I'm talking about staying away from fast fashion. I've gave my points. I hope you took them. I hope they went through your brain, came out the other way, went back into your brain, and I hope you digested it correctly. So we have a few brands I can recommend, and I'm going to put them right here, right above my finger. And these brands, great quality, great versatility, and a great foundation. Great foundation. Isn't that what we've been talking about this whole time? Yes. They're great foundational pieces. I don't know if that makes sense. They are great pieces to start a foundation. That sounds like it makes sense. They are great pieces to build a foundation and just to have in your wardrobe. You don't need to get 30 plus like shirts. There aren't that many people wearing them. What do you, you have a, are you dating someone that's gonna steal them from you? I doubt that. If you're here watching me, you're probably not with somebody. I'm sorry. You're probably not gonna find anyone. Uh, if there's any other brands that you, that are good sustainably that you know, or good quality, put them down in the comments. Help, you know, help other brothers out, help, uh, help other sisters out, help other theys and thems out. Whatever your orientation is, just help those other people out. Hello, Future JQ here. I was actually editing my video and I realized I actually missed a few things that I had actually forgot to talk about and that are really important. When you end up buying from, <clears throat> when you buy timeless pieces that are a bit more expensive and more pricey, they do hold value. It all depends on what you buy, of course, but they hold value and maybe even you can do the recycling method. What the recycling method is, is when you buy something that holds value or even has profit in it, can you then sell it later on in the future? I do this a lot with my wardrobe when I feel like I'm tired of it um, and I get bored of clothing. I will sell it and I make more like half of what I spent on it or maybe the same price that I, you know, bought it for. And... It's very helpful. The recycling method is super important, something I forgot to mention. The recycling method is super important because it allows you to get rid of old clothing, but also return the money that you spent or a good amount of it back and then buy more clothing. You know, I'm sure people are like, well, you know, I could buy Uniqlo shirts and sell them. 
yeah, you can, you can buy Uniqlo shirts and you can try and sell them. And the thing is like, there isn't much demand for them. And on top of that, they don't very much sell for as much as you bought them for. <clears throat> I don't know how much Uniqlo shirts go down at what, like 15, $30. Thrifting, buying secondhand, I would say mostly thrifting just because it's so uh, available and it's easy access. Thrifting can very much allow for overconsumption in a lot of clothing. Not the bad kind, of course not, because you know you are giving um, clothing a second chance, but in the, the terms of your closet being hurt and damaged, when you buy from thrift stores and you know you buy a bunch of stuff because that's what people usually do, you know you it's so cheap sometimes and you can afford doing it. Um, you buy a bunch of clothing and you have a pile of clothing now and you put it all on your like rack and stuff and you, you know so pretty because it felt it filled the void and made you happy you know for a great moment. And the next morning you wake up and you're like, let's put on something today. And then you look at your wardrobe and you're like, holy crap, there's too much clothes. Like, what do I do? Uh, what do I wear? I don't know what to wear. It's like, there's so much option for you and to, to like pick from that it soon becomes overwhelming and you don't know what to do. Having a small condensed closet is a lot better for you, your wardrobe and it, your brain. It allows you to be more versatile and it forces you to be more creative. Having a smaller wardrobe can force you to be creative. Like I, I know being sad and you know, helps you with the creative flow and stuff. Happiness doesn't do that. But when you are able to be forced to be uncomfortable, just because of, sometimes people feel comfortable having a lot of clothing to choose from because it's like, Oh, you know, I, I make an outfit that's different every day. No one ever seen these pants before. No one's ever seen this shirt before. I think it's more interesting when you're able to collide and bring in outfits together, kind of like right. mashed potato when you're like smashing it in. You bring these outfits together and it creates diversity and something more interesting. Um, it's It feels like a great accomplishment when I'm pairing a pair of pants and I make different outfits with it or even a shirt. Like, and it just changes up the whole like mood and area of the uh the stupid outfit you're building like a lego piece i forgot to mention hey you there's other ways besides buying firsthand um you know i talked about those you know old past jq old jq talked about brands that are good that you could buy from firsthand now there's brands that you can buy secondhand that are way worth your money and um second hand i love second hand i love dirty old items that have been worn i i love wearing them nice and musty from the memories and stuff that there were probably dudes making out with the clothing i was wearing from the past who knows like i don't know what's been in it i don't know who's been in it it's interesting there's a story behind it there's Grailed, there's depop there's ebay there's facebook marketplace if you really want to be down bad there's um sample sales from brands designer brands they do sample sales sometimes certain places do sample sales um i know there's a lot out here in la and beverly specifically i bought a lot of my designer on sample sale like a turtleneck this super sexy turtleneck from mastermind japan was like a thousand bucks i it was like marked the hell down because to be honest a thousand dollars what the hell and just watch out you know have your goggles and search around for sample sales and just sales a lot of brands do it i know brain dead did it i love brain dead i do like some streetwear stuff brain dead had a sample sale and i bought the moo moo cow shirt that i wear that has color wow it's me wearing color disgusting throw that away now take it away past jq have a great time in closing in closing I appreciate everyone that's sub subscribed to me and that's just following me. Uh, if you have any questions or you would like to see a video um, for me to do, go ahead and DM me on Instagram. I will respond, but DM me on Instagram some thoughts and ideas for the next video. But anyway, remember, fill the void and don't be happy. <laughs> And I recommend everyone gets a black pair of trousers, a black pair of denim pants, 
a black pair of black shirt. I don't know why you're taking advice from a guy whose his whole wardrobe is all black. You want to be that minimalistic goblin. Minimalistic mammoth. You think you think I, I get you think I, I date a lot? That's you're crazy. You're crazy. Why does Tinder make me feel so lonely and sad? Why did they ban me? Why did they ban me because I look like Joji? I'm not impersonating him. Why would you ban me? It's been three years. Can you unban me?